The Soybean School on RealAgriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Cruiser Max Vibrance Beans, and High Stick NT. Bernard Tobin for RealAgriculture.com coming to you today from Arva, Ontario. We're at the uh, Syngenta Research Farm and I'm joined by Sean Brenneman, uh, Syngenta Agronomist. Sir, welcome and thanks for having us. Thanks, Bernard. It's a pleasure to be here. Hey, you and I talked during the winter about IP soybeans, what you need to do to be successful. And that time, obviously, we talked about starting with certified seed. We talked about, you know, good weed control, getting control uh, early and sort of keeping it through the season. We're late July now, we're just sort of finishing up or getting through fungicide application timing. And uh, people say yield is made in August. What do people need to be thinking about as we head into August? Yeah, great question, Bern. There's a lot of management decisions that we've already kind of come through. Now that we're through the half way through the season, looking at the end of the season into harvest, there is a lot of management decisions growers can make out there to make sure that they're growing the best crop they can, getting the best yield, and making sure, especially from an IP perspective, that food grade quality, they're delivering the best food grade product they can. And I think one of the things I like to start with is getting out there and scouting those fields. Getting out there now, making sure that that weed control that you put down is doing its job, that you don't have uh, things like nightshade coming out there that can really, at the end of the day, is a game breaker for IP soybeans. But then making sure that if there's other weeds that have escaped, making that assessment, is it too late to put a, a second application down, which in a lot of cases it is. So what do I need to plan for maybe a pre-harvest application? You know, make sure that I'm, I'm taking those green weeds, that seed, out and making sure that it's desiccated so that it doesn't impact and we don't have uh, green staining at harvest. Yeah. So that's one of the things I think to, to look at now. Another thing to look at, even though we're past that optimal window, I think, for uh, that R2.5 for soybean fungus, sides if diseases become a problem, we're getting a lot of dews out there now. If soybean diseases still become a problem between now and uh, later on, it still might be worthwhile to put an application down. Right. And insects. Yes. Right? I mean, uh, part of that scouting obviously is looking at, uh, now I don't think it's been much of an aphid season, but lots of other things to look for. No, you're absolutely right. Aphids, we've had very minimal calls on those so far this year. Some of the new pests though that we're seeing out in the marketplace, Japanese beetle, and even in the field here we can see some Japanese beetle feeding going on. Uh, but the other one that concerns me with IP bean production specifically are stink bugs. So we've got the southern green stink bug and the brown stink bug, and those two are, are pretty devastating if they're in populations that reach threshold in IP soybeans. Because what those pests will do, they have piercing mouthpieces and they'll actually go into a pod with that piercing sucking mouthpiece and uh, suck out valuable fluids from that, that pod and that seed pod itself, the seed itself. And, and with that, it actually ingests an enzyme, a digestive enzyme in there and causes that seed to shrivel up, causes it to be dimpled, but really just negatively affects the quality of those IP soybeans. Mm -hmm. And now we we've always already talked about a, a pre-harvest application. Talk about, as you get into combining, some of the considerations. Yeah, so you know, once that crop is finished and it's ready to harvest, a lot of people think, oh, you know what, I've, I've done everything I could, done through the checklist, through the season, but there's a lot of things that even at harvest time can negatively impact whether or not you get that premium. And some of the things that I like to tell growers, walk around the field, make sure that there's no metal or glass on the outskirts as people are throwing bottles along roadsides or anything like that. Make sure that it's clean so you're not picking up any of that contamination, uh, a pre-harvest we talked about, but then also make sure that combines thoroughly cleaned out, any of the gravity wagons or trucks are thoroughly cleaned out, uh, so that just altogether avoid any corn or off type contamination within that load. So those are some of the things that you can help. The other thing I, I tried to tell guys is with augers, make sure you run augers slow but full. Right. They have to be full but run them slow and that's just to avoid any seed coat cracking, uh, making sure that you are delivering the best quality food grade soybeans to the market that you can. And a final thing we talked about earlier, uh, do, avoid the do. Make yes. sure, let's stay away from some some staining and tagging. Absolutely. Uh, IP soybeans, you want to wait until that dew evaporates in the morning. So you're looking at, depending on the day, it might be 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock in the morning before you want to start. And that's just to avoid any of that dirt tagging. When you have that wetness on the leaves and you go through and you get that little bit of dust, you'll get dirty soybeans and uh, most of the elevators, they could reject you for that. So that's something to definitely make sure you're harvesting later in the morning and you'll probably quit 
uh, earlier in the evening just to make sure that you're not dirt tagging those beans. Well, good stuff. So, Sean, thank you for your tips today. Uh, looking forward to August. A, a nice dry and with, a, with just enough moisture to make some yield. Great. Thanks, Bern.